Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. We're going to jump right into it. This is the new Grandstream GWN 7001 router. I'll leave a link to the data sheet down below so you can see that. Uh, one of the things that I want to point out on this is this is a 7001. There's a 7002 and a 7003. Any features you see missing here, make sure you're subscribed to uh, Grandstream's newsletter and things like that because they may or may not be having a uh, sneak peek at some newer hardware that will support the features that might be missing in these, these uh, 7000 series routers, which, by the way, MSRP on this is $55 USD, right? So we've got uh, six Ethernet ports, completely configurable. We've got a USB port, power. On the bottom, you've got rubber feet that came with it. You've got a wall mounting option here. And um, on top, you've got some LEDs. Comes with, you know, the router, an Ethernet cable, the power cube, and a quick start guide. So let's hop over to the router itself. And here is your main landing screen, a really nice overview. And if you have multiple WANs, you can drop that down, select that. You get real-time uh, traffic and things like that. Port info, this will tell you at a snapshot what's configured as what. You can see I've got one WAN port, five LAN ports, and it would give you all of the configured information down here. System info, you can see we're running the latest firmware as of August 8th. Here's our port configuration. So this is the physical port configuration if I want to change the speed and the duplex and the flow control. If I want to add another WAN port, I'm going to come in here and I can click Add, and then I select this port, and I can select, I can have five WANs on this and do failover, load balancing, all those things between all five WANs. On the LAN, this is where we set our VLANs. Um, on the VLAN port settings, this is where we would set PVID and allowed VLANs per port. We can do uh, DHCP reservations here. And then right out of the box, you can do local DNS records right on the router, right in the UI. It's fantastic. Network acceleration. If you do have the network acceleration turned on, you do lose QoS, something to, to note there. And then you have a client screen right here. So you can see all the information about your connected clients. You can uh, edit it. You can turn the static IP on here, change the device name that you're seeing. Now, under VPN, WireGuard is coming soon, just to let you know. So I know a lot of people are going to say, what about WireGuard? It is on the roadmap. It is coming. So out of the box, we get PPTP. We get IPsec, site to site, client to, to site. We get open VPN. We have asked for uh, VPN MFA, so that should be on the roadmap and coming soon. We've got L2TP, and then here we can add our remote users. Under routing, we can do policy routing, so we can do load balance, uh, policy routes. We have static routes that we can add, so this does not do like OSPF or BGP. Uh, most of the people that are going to use this router aren't going to use dynamic routing protocols, right? So... On to traffic management. So under ba basic settings, we can turn on traffic identification. And here is our stats. So any apps that it recognizes are going to be um, down here. And it, right here it says hardware acceleration is enabled. And if that's enabled, then you lose QoS, DPI, all those things. So we'll turn we'll turn that off. And that. Um, uh, error went away. So we will save the traffic identification. Then it'll start collecting your stats. Now here is your QoS and look at the QoS settings that are available. So first of all, we can select our, our uh, ports and we can set all of these options. So here are the class rules. So we can add a class rule. I mean, this thing, we can tag outbound traffic with uh, DSCP markings. Here's our VoIP settings. And then, excuse me, <clears throat> you can actually dig into all of these apps that it recognizes on your network. I mean, look at the list. It just goes on and on and on. And you can actually set the priority for all of these different apps, which is fantastic out of the box. So, I mean, this is going to be the most commonly used app. app so you're going to be able to see that. You're going to be able to, to turn it down. 
right? It's even got like Wikipedia, so you can give Wikipedia the the lowest uh, the lowest uh, priority that there is. Here's AP management. So if we have access points uh, paired, we can pair them. We can take over. Here's where you would set your SSIDs, your radio information, and your mesh mesh configuration. Under access control, uh, this also has to do with uh, your wireless. And then here is safe search. So we can enforce safe search on Bing, Google, and YouTube. External access, we can uh, set up DDNS. So they do support a few more uh, than they used to, which is nice. Still no uh, Google, but as always, that's changing. So not a big deal. Add our port forwarding here. Pretty simple. And we can, you know, specify the source, the source ports, all those good things. So it's a little bit better than just a standard port forward that we're used to. We've got our DMZ that we can set up here. And UPnP, which we usually disable. Now under firewall, you've got some basic settings. So it's got uh, this denial of service defense, spoofing defense. So you can, you know, block ARP spoofing. And then you've got... Uh, your rules here. Under content security, you can do DNS filtering. You can do app filtering, right? So if we come in here, we can actually uh, filter out recognized apps. And then you can do URL filtering. So this is going to continue to uh, grow and mature. So for 55 bucks, you can throw one of these in the lab or throw it in production and definitely test it out. Here's all of our inbound traffic rules, uh, outbound traffic rules. So, you know, um, you can add this. We can do so, you know, SNAT, DNAT. And then here we can turn on and off content security. And then we've got forwarding rules here. Now here's your SNAT and your DNAT. They're calling that under advanced NAT. You've got ALGs, which we always disable. You can do captive portal right here in the router. Under maintenance, we've got our some of our cloud uh, connection things, and it says uh, after TR069 is enabled, the router cannot manage APs. So just remember that. It does support SNMP 1, 2, and 3. can back up and restore our configuration very easily. We've got a full-featured set of system diagnostics here. So uh, ping traceroute, core file, We've got capture on the interfaces. We can send things to an external syslog. We look at our ARP cache, link tracing, and then we've got some uh, network diagnostics here. I haven't run that yet. We're going to when we uh, get into the into the weeds video. Then here is where we can do our firmware upgrade. You've got alerts and notifications. So. Uh, you can see that it's throwing a fit about not being able to get out to the internet. We can enable email notifications. So if the router encounters issues, we can get those notifications. Here's our basic settings, time, uh, LEDs on or off. Here's our manager settings. So if we're going to put it in the uh, put it in the cloud, here's our security management. So our login password, we can change the HTTPS port, we can enable or disable the WAN from being able to answer to this interface. We've got SSH, and then we've got password, passwordless remote access. Um, but you have to have this bound to gwn.cloud, and I, I don't know how I feel about enabling that. I think maybe leave it uh, disabled for now. Here we can do uh, scheduling. We've got certificates, so we can... For open VPN, uh, we can put certificates in here. And then if you put a USB drive in the USB port, you can do file sharing. So you can see this thing for $55 USD. Holy cow, Grandstream is bringing the features. So uh, the next video, we're going to do a setup. Um, we're going we're gonna to build a network with this. That's, that's where we're heading, right? So let me know what questions you have about this router down in the comments. I'll answer anything that I can. Uh, make sure you watch for this. We'll do a, a video on the 7002 and we'll also do a video on the 7003 once I have that. Make sure uh, that you're following us. Uh, you know, you're signing up for the newsletter and all those things. We'll get to that here in a second. But let me know 
what you want to know about these routers, the features you want to see. We'll make sure we're sending those features over to Grandstream. Make sure you're sending those features because they are well on their way to creating just some real awesome hardware here. And if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment, share. Please follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below along with our affiliate links. And if you need IT consulting, head on over to willyhow.com. Fill out that form that's on that front page, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. Um, also, that's where you can sign up for the newsletter. Make sure you're signed up. we got some exciting things coming. Once again, I'm Willie. Let me know what you think about this router down in the comments. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.